Hi guys, and welcome back to my channel. This video is gonna be about medium format photography. And for most of you that have already started your journey in film photography, you're more than likely already on 35 mil, but maybe you're wondering about 120 or stepping up to 120 in medium format and getting yourself a medium format camera. <laughs> So medium format and 120 film can be a little bit daunting when you first start, but just as you did with 35mm, it's only a case of getting used to it, and once you're used to it, you'll be flying and you won't regret it at all. Probably the biggest challenge you'll have is trying to find yourself a medium format camera that's gonna suit you and uh, you're gonna enjoy shooting. There's so many out there, so many different kinds and also so many different prices as well. I started my medium format journey off with a Mamiya 645. It wasn't mine, it was on loan to me by a friend and I can remember at first really sort of trying to, you know, get used to this new format, especially loading the film into the camera and developing it. It was all new and it took me a while to get used to it, but that's okay because, you know, everything takes time. Medium format cameras all vary in different shapes and sizes, but most of them take the same film, which is the common 120 film that I've got in my hand right here. You might have heard some people call it 120 millimeter. That's okay, it's because they're so used to saying 35 millimeter, so they'll go 120, 120 millimeter, totally get it. It's uh, actually 120 film. It's got nothing to do with the size. It's all to do with Kodak when they first started making uh, these films. So why is it called 120 film? Well, I had a little browse around the internet to find out why it was called 120 film because I didn't know. And I learned that um, back in the day, in the late 1800s, Kodak's first camera was the number two bullet camera. And the film associated with that camera, they'd call it the number two bullet film. And then they came out with their second camera, which was the pocket camera, Kodak pocket camera, and the film that fitted inside that that they made for that camera, they called it the pocket camera film. And then so on, the third camera, the fourth camera, the fifth camera, and all these names started to get a bit confusing. So in 1901, when they brought out the Kodak Brownie number no. two, this was the film that was associated with that camera. And at the time, they called it the Brownie number no. two film. Uh, but in the end, it all got so confusing, they um, come up with this numbering system um, for their films. And the 20 means it was their 20, the Kodak Brownie 2 was their 20th film camera that they um, invented or introduced. And it just so happened that this film that we know today fell on their 20th camera that they made. And that's why it's called a 120 film. So this is the 120 film box, obviously different to 35 mil. And inside that box is a foil packed and the film is sealed inside the foil packing to keep it airtight and nice and fresh and then once you rip that open there's the film itself it's not going to fall out and spring out in front of you because there's a little sticky tab there you have to pull that off before you start obviously rolling it on into into your camera um, it's paper backed so unlike 35 mil it's kept light tight inside its canister this has got no canister all it's got is paper backing and you can see the paper backing there that's not the film itself, that's just paper backing. That is the leader of the film, so when you start putting it into your camera and start advancing to your first frame, that's the only part that gets uh, hit with light. If we go along further, all the way through, there, about 15 or so inches in, there's the film, the start of the film there, you can see it. So it's quite easy really to load these films into your cameras. Like I said, it is a little bit tricky and fiddly at first, um, but the most important thing is to look for the start position. So if we go along here, there's the start position there. That needs to align with the start position on your camera. If that's not aligned with the start position inside your medium format camera or it's misaligned, the chances are your frames are gonna be all over the place inside the camera or you're gonna miss be missing frames. You have to make sure that that's aligned perfectly when you're loading it into whatever camera you've got. This camera, for example, is six by nine, so I have to make sure that that start position is aligned with the markings inside this camera. In fact, there isn't none. I've got a little window for that. And the other thing that can be a little bit confusing is these numbers, all these numbers on the back. Well, the idea of the numbering system on the back is they're all positioned for different formats. Now the numbers don't matter on more modern medium format cameras. The only reason the numbers matter is for these older cameras where you've got the little red window at the back. So as you're advancing to the next frame, you can see what your exposure number is gonna be. So if you've already shot number one, you advance until you see number two. And just before that advances, you get this little indicator warning sort of, um, you can see in there in this case, the little dots. Um, but I start off from a large dot, 
all the way down to a small dot and then you know that you're nearly at your next frame number two number three or whatever it is so that's what those numbers for are for on the back so like i said earlier on there's many different sizes of cameras you've got 645 which is the smallest and it's just maybe a little bit of trickle up from 35 mil then you've got six by six six by seven six by eight six by twelve six by seventeen and even you've got six by twenty four absolute massive panoramic looking negs so this 120 film can offer a number of negative sizes depending on the camera so 645 being the smallest size negative on this roll of film you'll get 15 shots out of the whole roll six by six next step up you'll get 12 shots six by seven you'll get 10 exposures six by eight you'll get nine exposures six by nine you'll get eight exposures and this old folding camera here this is the ag for record two look at the size size of the negatives there look six by nine that's a six by nine negative look at the size of it so <laughs> i'll be shooting this later on in the day um, for another video so that's all about the film and the format so let's get on with loading this film into a camera and i'll show you how i load the film into a camera and also how i load the film onto my developing reel as well so let's uh, get on and load this roll of film into this Yashica Mat 124G camera. This is a 6x6 medium format camera. You can see it nice square back we've got on there. Um, so first of all, I need to put my take-up spool into the camera, which goes here. Quite simple. These all vary as well. Like I said to you, um, I've noticed that the cameras are not all the same, obviously, and they've all got their own different way of loading the film into. Um, but it's all much of a muchness once you get used to it. So just make sure it turns. There's my take up spool ready to be taking the film up. And this is the film here, the film goes here. So what I always do before I take the sticky stuff off is make sure the film's in first. Now I'm doing this in a cack handed way because I'm trying to show you guys on video. So oh, that's gone in the right, look at that. So now the film is sitting inside the camera. All I need to do is take the sticky stuff off. Let that roll through. And I just grab the other end, put it to one side. Now we can unflap. There's a little lip there, you can see it. So that little tiny notch is what you put inside the take up spool. So literally just take it over, fold it in. Excuse my fingers and thumbs. So now that's inside. Um, I don't want it to come out. So what I do is I keep my finger pressed on it as I just advance slightly. So I'm just keeping my, making sure that it's going through I don't want it to come out like so. Now that's rewound onto it now, and then I hold this part of the film, just the edge of it, and just make sure I take up the slack. There you go, there's no slack. Now, do you remember I said about the start position? On this camera, the start position's here. That's where I need to put my start position. And that's it. All I need to do now is close the back, and then I'm now advancing the film to frame number one. That's now ready to shoot at frame number one. And this is the folding camera, another roll of film there. Uh, this one's a little bit different. If we open this back, uh, there's the take up spool already sitting there. I've already loaded that. But the same applies again, same principle, but like I said, all cameras have got their own little different ways. This way you pull this one out, flip that back, pop that in. <laughs> oh dear, there it goes, it's in there now. And then I can undo the sticky bit again. Push that down. So undo the sticky bit, and that gives me the film piece that I need to put into the take-up spool. Over it goes. Okay, so like before, let's now into the take-up spool, just slightly turn it, holding the box, the bottom of the, the reel there. Okay. Now this one's different because the start-up position, I've got a window at the back, like so. So I need to align the start-up position with that window, which is gonna be around about here. There's no markings inside the camera, so it's kind of like a, a little bit of a guesstimate. But here it comes, a start position now. So around about there, I reckon. And I can open that window and have a look. I think I'm pretty much there. And that's all there is to it on this one. Close the lid. And with this one, I have to look through the window to get to my frame number one. It's not an automatic, automatic advance like the other camera. So these older cameras are a lot different. Let's uh, do that now. So we can go through. Now as we can start 
that was the start position there so I got that right and I've just got to keep advancing so here's my leader coming through now and of course you don't see all this on the other cameras because they they do it for you there's the first notch second notch trying to focus in third notch fourth notch and the next one is going to be the frame number oh fifth notch frame number one so now I'm ready to shoot this camera. Now we just loaded that film. If we open up the camera now and see the position, which we know is set to number one, which is there. If we cut the backing paper off, we'll see where the first frame is, and where the film is underneath. And the easiest way to show you. And this is a test piece of film that I've got. It's expired 2009, I think. And this one hasn't been in a fridge or freezer. So I'm not going to be shooting this on anything important. We take the backing paper off, there's the actual film itself. And if we pull this away now, that's where the sticky tape is. And that's the start of frame number one. This is how we advance the film when we're shooting. So that would be number one taken. And then we advance in, seeing the number two coming up. Over to frame number two. And then over to frame number three after that one and so on and so forth so if you're used to developing 35 millimeter film at home this is the reel that you're familiar with it actually comes apart like so and locks back into place for 120 film and just the same as before you've got these notches um, it is a little bit tricky when you first start doing this i'll show you how i do it everyone does it differently but this is how i do it and I can get the film on the reel 99.9% .9 of the time, unless the film is really coily. Sometimes these films can be really tight, really curly, and it's a real pig to get on the reel. But um, other times it's okay, and you don't have to have a fight with it. So what I do in the dark is I keep pulling and pulling, like so, until my fingertips and my left hand can fill the film. There it is there. See, I can feel that already. And then once I've felt that, I then just literally pull the film. This is already ex exposed film. I then pull the film off of the reel like so. This is all done in the dark. And then when you get to the end of the film, you'll have this little tiny piece of sticky tape where the film is stuck to the backing paper. Like so, you need to peel that off away from the backing paper. I've used masking tape just for this example, if we take the masking tape off. And what I do is I just flip, that's already been done, but what I normally do is just flip the masking tape over and secure it like so. And that's the part that I load straight away onto the reel. If I was to load this side onto the reel, which I've done many times before, I always have trouble with that side. Um, so I always use the heavier side, which has got the tape on it. There. So in total darkness, I'll just feed that onto, you can see straight away, it's just fed straight onto it. Okay, and once I can feel that's on the notches with my thumb, I'll then just pull it past the ball bearings like so. I've got two fingers underneath there like so. And then I'll just ratchet away like I do 35 mil, keeping my pinky fingers underneath to stop the film. Um, well, I don't know, I just feel more comfortable. That's how I do it, like so. And once it's on, it's on. Then I can go off and develop my film. So that's all I've got to say about medium format. If you haven't tried it before, definitely have a look. It's not as hard as you think. And like I said earlier on in the video, when you start shooting medium format, it is a little bit daunting at first. It might be tricky. You might be lucky and crack it straight away. I didn't, and I know many others didn't, but once you start snowballing with it, it all becomes really easy. And uh, these cameras, 
like this Agfa Record 2. These folding cams are fantastic. I started off pretty much my medium format journey with these and I've got quite a few folders now and I love shooting them. I'm down at the farm at the moment, down on Dickie's farm, and I'm gonna shoot a roll of this APX 6x9 negatives on this camera around this farm. So if you wanna see this video, I'll put a link in the description. This is gonna be the next video uh, that I make. Uh, other than that, guys, thanks very much for watching. Get into medium, medium format, you'll love it. I'm around the farm, gonna play with the cows. I'll catch you next time. Ball. Hey, ball. Do you kiss balls? Is that what you do to attract them? I don't know. Ball.